We are rounding out the day now. Um, we've got our our last fire chat uh, panel of the day. For those of you that attended the women's breakfast yesterday, um, Nelly alluded to a little bit of this, you know, and talking about what are the skills of the future, the technology skills of the future uh, that we need to be looking at as companies and as Latinos and Hispanics. So we've got a great topic coming up. It's empowering the future Hispanic and Latinx digital workforce. And to kick things off, we're going to welcome back to the stage our fellow president, uh, Omar Duque. And Nelly. And we're going to bring up a fan favorite, <laughs> Nelly Barrera. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> so, can I help you? Thank you. Let's put this in the middle here. Okay. Okay. We will furnish her around. We're good. Here. We're good. Is that, is that? No, Perfect. You want it over here. No, oh, my God. It's right fine. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Thank you. So, Hi, everybody. Here we are at the end of this summit. Yes. Uh, yes. I hope everybody's had a great time. I hope you had a good time. I've had a blast. Um, I know that, um, so what we wanted to do is mm -hmm. we wanted to end the summit with a little look into the future. Yeah. Um, and um, so to set the stage, um, I just kind of want to throw out a couple of, uh, a couple of, of, of figures. Um, we all know, everybody in this room knows that a digital transformation is already underway in our economy mm -hmm. and in the talent marketplace. By 2025, that is essentially in two years, 40% of the core skills that people need, all professionals, not just technology mm -hmm. here, 40% of the core skills will change entirely. And 50% of the entire workforce will need reskilling. To meet this demand, and this is why, you know, what we're doing here at High Tech, U.S. organizations must rethink and redesign their talent and leadership development strategies, especially as it relates to Hispanic talent. And, you know, I, I hope that you've, uh, I hope that, that you've taken this away. This is at the core of who we are and what we do at High Tech. Um, and it's consistent with our mission to accelerate the power and impact of Hispanic technology leaders from the classroom the all the way to the boardroom. Mm -hmm. um, and as we've been hearing throughout the course of the last couple of days, it's our time. Um, but in order for us to take full advantage, we have to be part of this digital shift that is happening today. Um, we partnered with Accenture, and, and that's what we're going to be talking about, to help build a roadmap mm -hmm. uh, for what organizations and individuals uh, need to be thinking about and working on. So, Nelly, I know we're excited to launch uh, this report. I, I, yeah. I think it was released yesterday, yes. uh, entitled... Uh, the, uh, the, the future of the workforce today. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about this collaboration, okay. uh, what it is, but more importantly, why. Why we did it awesome. and why it's so important. So thank you, Omar, and thank you everybody for sticking around, by the way, so that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> so I would tell you that um, there's this line that I use all the time when I'm talking to leaders, and that is that I just don't want to put any energy into admiring a problem. I want to fix things. I want to be aware of what the facts are, what is the data telling us, and how are we going to action it. So in one of the conversations I had with Omar several months ago, we were talking about how do we really understand what is happening in our community when it comes to technology? Where are these gaps? How do they exist? Do we know they exist? Um, so we started talking about this collaboration um, several months ago, and Karina, who's around here somewhere, uh, really helped us sort of bring this to full fruition here. But what we did at Accenture was we thought about this even broader. So we said, let's think about um, the tech digital skills that we need in today's work environment. You've said this a couple of times while we've been here. Every company's a tech company nowadays, right? And that's true. 
So we um, did a research um, and we uh, reached out to 26,000 people. Uh, 26,000 people responded globally. Then we took that research and we said, let's bring it home. And we brought it home to our community. And members of our community that participated were 1,200 Hispanic Americans, Latinx um, community members. And we asked the same questions of the broader survey. And in that survey, um, we wanted to identify how familiar is our Latinx Hispanic American community with what's happening in the field of technology? Um, do they know the skills they should be going for? So that was part of the main focus and we spent a lot of hours thinking about the right questions and how do we get around this. So what I wanted to do is, I'm not controlling the clicker, so what I want to do is I want to share. You want it? Are you, you want me to, to take it? Yes, I never say no to controlling something. <laughs> uh, it's like bring it. Um, so you spoke about this, so let me go. There. Okay, so here, um, so here, what you will see is there are two categories around um, some of this research, and the, the first category you're going to be very familiar with this, and you're probably going to think to yourself, I know all of this, but what I'm here to tell you is you may but the rest of our community doesn't, and we need you to go out there and be the advocates and the ambassadors to get this story out. So in the first category, you see data, you see tools, and you see software. The second one is around strategy and networks. So when you take a look at this, what you will find is, if we go, to, this was 22 skill sets that we presented in this research. So we go to the next one. And here, what I wanna talk about is the following. So when we looked at the Hispanic American Latinx data, uh, what we heard was that on average, they came back with knowing and being familiar and being aware of five of the skills out of the 21. And when we think about that, we're like, okay, well, we're already a little behind here, so what's happening, right? The second piece around that was that if you compare it to the overall uh, sort of population that responded, they were aware on average on nine. So, okay, so we're not that far behind. We know that the whole world needs to sort of get more aware of what's happening in, in the tech world. What's interesting is if we look at, maybe I'll go back one slide here. Can I go back? I said I wanted to control, okay. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, so um, if we think about those five, right, those five for our community were blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, Internet of Things and of Things and user experience. Those are the ones that our community said that they were the most familiar with. Now, when I saw those responses, I was uh, you know a little surprised about a couple of them and not others. But what I said to myself was, okay, we have work to do, and we have work to do so we understand all the others that were missed. Now, interesting enough in this um, in this research, and I'll go back to this other slide, um, is that we also looked at the soft skills the soft skills around how we're showing up with these skills in the, in the corporate world, recognizing that soft skills are still very much needed in the corporate environment. So if we look at the results here from a soft skills perspective, Hispanic American and Latinx came in very high. They came very high, and we talked about this, right? They came very high, about 43% were very familiar and comfortable with the soft skills. And the most popular ones were collaboration, because we're taught to collaborate in our community, right? Uh, and it was emotional intelligence. I swear I tell people that I got through my career because I know so much about EQ. Um, and the other one was communication. Now, this is great, and we've talked about this. It's great that we have these soft skills and we went above average even from the global responses. But we also know that these skills alone are not gonna get us to those roles that are critically important to our leaders. So we need to combine the two. So I wanna share a stat with you, and then Omar, I'm gonna turn it over to you, is that when I read this, I was like, oh boy, and we had so many calls around this, but this is the line. My Hispanic workers and other minority groups uh, with better access to, if they have better access to skilling and fewer barriers, they would get $4,705 more on average in their pay if they have more access to technology, more awareness, and less barriers. So what high tech and the board and others are trying to do is how do we get to close that gap? Yeah. How do we get there to ensure that we do this? Now, there's a line that I want us to think about 
because one of the things that I struggle with a lot is when I'm talking to young people and some that may not be in college, others are trying to figure out what to do. Uh, but you know, they tell me about their jobs and what they're doing. They say, oh yeah, well I got this job and you know, it's paying me $50,000 a year and I'm really happy and I'm thinking, oh God, don't be that happy. Let's move this forward, right? <laughs> so one of the lines that I want us to start thinking about and promoting out there is, and I'm gonna read this because I don't wanna get this wrong, but we must ensure our community sees tech digital skilling as the new currency. Yes. That's what we need. We need to make sure that the parents, the caretakers, teachers, educators, professionals, that we have conversations about if you're not skilling in this area, you're going to fall behind. You're going to leave money on the table. And I talked briefly about the uh, personal wealth model yesterday. I know we dive deep into it, but we have to start thinking about how we're building our wealth. What are we doing for ourselves to solve for ourselves, for our legacy of our family and for all the people we have to take care of? So as you can tell, I'm very passionate about this, but I'm going to pause. I'm going to breathe. I'm turning it over to you for well, the next slide. Nelly, I want to mm -hmm. highlight something yeah. before we go to the next slide. Yes. Um, because, um, you know, it's something when I looked at this initial research, um, and looked at the fact that we only have five out of those 20 ones. I mm -hmm. think that's, that, that's something that is concerning, right? Yep. Um, but when we go back and look at the soft skills, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have sometimes, and we talked about this with Damien, like I, I, I don't know that I love the term soft skills. I get what we're mm -hmm. talking about. I get it because they're incredibly important, especially when it comes to leadership. And so ever the optimist, yes. I see so much opportunity here because we know that to be an effective leader, to lead others, to run teams, you really need that intersection of both yeah. of those skills. And I think we're actually ahead in, in, in this sense, right? Mm -hmm. Like we as a community have so much potential. We just need to align the skills to your mm -hmm. point, right? We yeah. need this continuous learning. And um, earlier this morning, I know that you are very involved with Alpha and, yep. and know Damien well. I think you are a mentor He's one to of him. my babies, yes. Um, yes, yes, yes and yes. he spent yes. almost 20 years at Accenture. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that we talked about this morning was how do our two organizations collaborate? Mm -hmm. And this is about like how can we as high tech bring the knowledge of our community, of our members, to the alpha community, right? Which is a, which is a little different. They they work more with younger students, earlier in career, more mid level, mm -hmm. and not necessarily in technology. But to the statistics that we saw earlier, how do we build that tech wraparound for mm -hmm. those those individuals? And then specifically, what areas do we focus on? And I think we have our roadmap here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these are the skills that we need mm -hmm. to focus on. And so one of, the, one of the collaboration things that we talked about was this tech summit that we're going to be doing mm -hmm. in the spring of next year here in the Northeast with Alpha. These are the areas that we're going to, that, that, that we're going to look and, and mm -hmm. we're going to focus on. Awesome. Um, I had the opportunity, because I, I want to stay on this learning mm -hmm. question. And I'll get to another so, slide that you have I think it's so important. <laughs> um, I uh, had the opportunity to um, see Lynn Sweet. Accenture's mm -hmm. CEO speak a couple of weeks ago. Julie, Julie Sweet. I'm sorry, Julie Sweet. I'll tell her you call her Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Sweet is a Julie. Uh, is, is a Lynn Sweet is a columnist <laughs> oh, okay, in, in Chicago, <laughs> and so that that's that's why. So I saw Julie Sweet yes. speak, mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the things she talked about was the culture um, mm -hmm. at Accenture and this idea of building a culture of continuous learning. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, when we interview people. Um, one of the, 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 a question that we always ask is, what have you learned in the last six months? Um, can you talk to us a little bit about yes. what the, the culture and the mm -hmm. environment is and, and how um, Accenture really kind of focuses on continuous learning and mm -hmm. what maybe other organizations can learn from that? No, absolutely. Um, you know, I would say that upskilling is a conversation we constantly have. It is a conversation, by the way, that you should have with yourselves and your organizations and the people that either you report to or those that report to you because we have to have that continuous learning mindset. And I, you know, I at one point in my career didn't have that. I was like, okay, I'm happy here, I'm doing well, this is great, all working out. And then you, know, you meet with leaders like Julie Sweet. And when I met her before she became the CEO, one of the things that she said in one of the committee meetings that we were sitting at is we must insist 
um, being continuous learners. We cannot say we sit in this part of the organization and don't understand this part of the organization. We serve clients, which means that we can bump into a client at any point in time, and that client may ask us something. We have to be well-versed or at least know some of it. So Omar and I were talking earlier today and, you know, I happen to be one of those people that's really good at the soft skills, right? Um, but, you know, tech skills for me, I'm like, okay, you know, that's fine. That's what we do over there. <laughs> but when Julie became our CEO, she said, we are all going to understand technology. We're all going to be proficient in these areas. And I'm thinking, okay, that's nice. But when the curriculum came and hit my inbox, I'm like, oh, good Lord. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, this technology quotient thing, TQ, and I'm like, what in the world of worlds, right? So we all, no matter where we sit, no matter what level, from the most junior level to the most senior level, we have to take these courses and we have to pass these tests. So I wrote them down, some of the ones I took, AI, blockchain, cloud, data, XR, metaverse, um, security, all these different things. And I remember sitting through one saying, why am I doing this? Like, why, why am I taking this course? Right. But she was so serious about it that at first she said, okay, I'm going to be nice and let people just, you know, the, just do it because they're going to know it's important to do it. Well, the percentage of people that took the courses were very low. Um, and then she said, okay, it's now mandatory. It's going to be attached to your compensation. And we were like, oh, oh, <laughs> let's get with it with the quickness, right? So we all started taking the courses. And the funny thing about this is, is that I get it now. Because when I'm talking to people, I can talk blockchain. Yeah. I could talk about some of these things that has she not put this into, you know, how we're being measured, that would have not had happened. And I think to your point earlier, to the fact that every organization is a tech organization. When we looked at the numbers of the skills, we should all be wanting that. Again, most of you in here, this is what you do. But I go back to what I said earlier. We must encourage others to not be afraid of this. Because I'll be honest, I was afraid. I was like, this is hard stuff, right? And I got to think a lot. <laughs> so, but, but, you know, I mean, I'm glad that she's forcing us. And it's like 16 courses. Like, I'm not even done with the whole curriculum. And, and I think this mm. this takes us nicely to to the next to, to the, next, to to yeah. the so yours was to this one mm -hmm. um, because it's really about you know how we as a community need to really it, it's a mind shift right mm -hmm. and I think this has happened at Accenture uh, forced down in, yes. in many ways right but I think at some point you realize the the value and the importance of it and that's what. Um, I think we as a community need to do, to your point earlier, right? You need to be talking to students in, in high school and college, to parents, to colleagues, because this, this, is, this is the reason that we currently have this gap, but it's also the opportunity, right? And so if you think of you know, some of these statistics, right, that um, Hispanic, um, uh, a critical part of any strategy to address the skills gap will be in preparing, skilling, and inspiring Hispanic American workers, who by the year 2028 will make up 20.9% of the labor force. In fact, 78% of US workforce net growth will be from Hispanic American and Latinx workers by 2030. And I keep saying this, I feel like I have done a couple of videos, um, whether it was at Latitude or Accenture, and we've heard it here, the future of our, our, our country's competitive advantage lies within our community. Where the Hispanic community goes, there goes the country. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't say that lightly. I think this is, this is, we are at a critical point in our country where if all of us, you know, the, from, the Latin, from the Latino community really stepping up and saying, look, we need to have this mind shift. We need to do better. We need to think about the digital skills that we need. How do we contribute? Um, in a more meaningful way to the digital economy, and then also companies. Many of the companies that are here, you know, that, that's why you're here, right? You're looking to uh, attract, invest uh, in this community, but it's gonna take all of us. Uh, but thankfully, we've sort of <laughs> built out a little bit of a, yes. of, a, of a roadmap here. Yeah, we do. So uh, what we've done is, again, with how I started, right, is just you get tired of admiring a problem and you want to have the awareness, you want to start actioning things. So one of the things that we talked about, Omar and I, and Guillermo was in those calls to Carolina and others, um, with our marketing team and our research team is, so, so now what? You know, like, you know, like that Finding Nemo movie that he, they're trying to escape <laughs> the fish tank, 
And I watched it so many times when my son was young. He would get a timeout. Oh, you could watch Finding Nemo on your timeout. Um, and you, you get into this movie, and then they escape. And then they look at you and go, okay, now what? Now what? Right? So it's the now what time. So we've been made aware. We have the research results. Um, we know that our community is a big presence in this country. Uh, we've heard a lot from you, Omar, on this. We heard from Sol Trujillo and, and, and others. So we started thinking about, okay, so, so what do we do about this? Where are we going with this? And what we talked about was, yes, there's five steps to this, and we need all CXOs to know about this. So we're on this mission to ensure that the C-suite across knows what we need to do. But we also want soldiers on the ground, right? People on the ground, advocates on the ground, which is why we released it on social media. So you start to see a lot of that. So take it, do whatever you want with it, show it to your organization, but it's all out there for you to leverage it. So we know that we need to investigate these skill gaps, right? We've started that process. We know about this already. And we're gonna to continue to do this because we're gonna keep evolving this, um, this research. We know that we have to promote continuous learning. It's got to be part of our conversations with each other and with young people. It just has to be. And people, in, like even in my case, when we started taking these courses, I, I, I kind of like, you know, shied away from it. But we have to understand the why. Why is this important going back to if we look at it from the perspective of our wealth model and how we're evolving to have more skills, to be more um, promotable within organizations. And then the third one is really where this soft skill comes in. It really is around creating and fostering an empowering environment. I could talk hours about this, but I'm gonna only spend one minute with you and um, Omar on this because these words up here, and I'm gonna read it from here, foster empowerment, career courage, and cultural confidence. How simple does that sound? Mm, sounds simple. How much time do we spend focusing on this? Are we showing up with courage in our career or are we minimizing ourselves? Are we shrinking ourselves in a corner because we don't want to make others uncomfortable with our assertiveness? Uh, we don't want to ask for too much. It is exhausting what we go through when we're trying to decipher, am I going to show up today or am I going to show down today? What am I doing today? What's happening here today? Who's around me? So I think this is really an important part because we owe it to ourselves to be able to start asking ourselves, and I said in the woman's breakfast, are we being seen? Are we being heard? Are we feeling valued? And guess who owns part of that? You do. We do. And we start to disrupt and agitate cultures and environments by how we start showing up. And I say disrupt and, ag and agitate with good intentions. So that cultural confidence that we need to sort of gain, we have to own that space. And I've done this, I've been Accenture for 36 years, so it's been a lifetime, right? And, and what I can say throughout this journey, no matter what country I'm in, no matter where I am, what I do is tell myself this before I go anywhere. I am where I earned to be. It doesn't mean I'm comfortable. Doesn't mean I'm not intimidated. It doesn't mean that there's a little bit of me saying, why did I get on the plane and why am I here? It doesn't mean any of that. But what it means is that I got there because I earned to be there. So I would tell myself to show up and to my organization to show up because they're paying for me to get there, right? So, so this piece is really important. Maybe we'll do a deep dive on that one. I, 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 I want to kind of interject there for a second because it has been my experience. Um, and, and I'm going to just you know, show a moment of vulnerability here. Like, I, I think like everybody else, like imposter syndrome is real. Oh, yeah. And uh, whether you know, I, I serve on a board. And, and, and I you know, find myself in this board as, as a subject matter expert and in certain areas. And, and I have this enterprise that's looking at me and it, you ask yourself that, oh my God, <laughs> I'm here. And, and that, it's, it's, it's something you have to work on every single day, or at least I do, right? Yes. Um, you have to come in with that intention. You have to be your own hype person. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have to focus on it every day and it's okay. Like if, if you're not focused, if, if, if there's nothing wrong with you, um, mm -hmm. if, uh, if you feel like you have to do this every day. Yeah. I mean, it's something that two things happen. You don't forget it and others don't let you forget. They don't let you forget that you're the only one in that room. They don't let you forget that you yeah. sound different. Yeah. They don't let you forget that you have different, you know, sort of ways of showing up in styles. And, and to your point about the board, um, 
it's interesting because I'm from New York City, born and raised, um, and I was invited to sit in this women's group that it was just, I mean, the who of who of, of, you know, New York women that have made it in New York City. And I was like, why am I invited to this? I don't know. Okay, but I'll go buy a new outfit, feel better. You know, I went through the whole thing, right? And I, I was really, really, you know, intimidated by this. And I drove into the city, I parked my car, and as I'm walking towards the building where we're going to meet, which was in Rockefeller Center, St. Patrick's Cathedral is right there. And, um, you know, I don't push my faith on anybody else, but I start my day in prayer and I end my day with gratitude. That's how I live my life, and that's how I get through the difficult times. And I saw the church, the cathedral, uh, let's be clear, <laughs> and um, I walked in and I sat there in reflection and said a prayer. And my prayer was around, help me show up, not intimidated with the group of women that are gonna be in this room. Because I was really, really feeling intimidated. Just the thought of going gave me anxiety. And I did my prayer and I walked out and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And I went into the meeting and I showed up. And, and we've done amazing things together as a, as a group of women, but that is very real. And, and the narrative we tell ourselves is, is intense. So I know we have like five minutes left, so I'll get through the rest of this. Um, the other is, and we've talked about this a lot, Omar, right, is um, elevate diverse leaders. Yeah. We have to get comfortable with that. I mean, I, I sometimes hear people saying, well, you know, I want to promote this person, but they're also Latino like me, and people are going to ask, well, are you only promoting people like you? And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, like, seriously, like, um, this has been going on for a long time. I just, not people that look like me. So we, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to promote ourselves and others like us? So one of the things that I love about high tech, right, that we've done is that you come here and you see others like you. It's where you feel familiar right away. You meet amazing people, and we support each other in ways that is in incredible and we're seen in ways that are incredible. You celebrate us, right? And by celebrating us, you almost force our organizations to notice us. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, that's the power of this right here. It's like, even if your organization is not seeing you, well, when social media blasts that big picture of you with this award, they're like, oh, wait a minute. Um, you know, we have to pay attention to this, and our marketing team should really promote this too, by the way. Right? So we go through all of that. So when we talk about Elevate Diverse Leaders, it's not just about expecting others to do it for us. It's how we're doing it for ourselves and others like us. Yeah. I, I, I want to say there's a lot of intentionality uh, yeah. on our part um, behind that, right? Last night at the awards yeah. gala, we celebrated the High Tech 100, yes. and this is a big deal. Um, and, and this is something that I want to offer to you know, the, high tech, the high tech community. We want to know your successes because we want to be able to celebrate them publicly. So if you get a promotion uh, or you, know, you, you, you have a, a new opportunity, we, we want to be able to share that because we need to... We need to share in those successes um, because that's how, that's how we elevate ourselves Absolutely. as a broader community. Absolutely. So the last one, what I'm going to do is a challenge, but I'm going to click it for your slide, the last one, because you're going to challenge this group to do what? To do something about this, right? So we're going to go to that slide. So take it over. Well, and, that's, and I think that this is a fitting end to this summit mm -hmm. because this is the challenge that we've been talking about um, the entire two days that we're here. And that's that every single person in this room uh, plays a role in, in building the future of the workforce. Um, everybody, uh, every company, every individual. It starts with that mindset, mindset shift for you and for others around you, right? If you're a parent, you have an opportunity to, to talk to your children, to talk to your neighbors, to talk to their friends, to encourage them about this new on this new digital uh, economy and digital reality. You have an opportunity to elevate people within your organization. Uh, and you have an opportunity to collaborate with organizations like High Tech, like Alpha, or other groups that are in your community, right? This isn't just about us. This is about how we build a collective narrative about, around how we can elevate our community for the future. Um, I know that we are committed at High Tech to do this. I know we are committed to continue to empower you, whether it's through summits like this, through different programs that we may have, like our Emerging Executive Program, the Mentorship Programs, our Board Readiness Program. We need this, not just for our community. Yes, we do, but we need it for our economy. We need it for our country. 
if we want to remain a global leader, we need to step up. And, and it starts with everybody in this room. So um, I, I'm seeing some of the chat. The report is available online. There's some questions about yes. where people can get it. Mm -hmm. um, it's available online um, through Accenture. I know I've shared it on my LinkedIn. We will share it and through it high too. tech. Mm -hmm. Um, and we will share it via a, a wrap-up email to everybody mm -hmm. um, yes. that has participated both in person and virtual. Awesome. Thank you. Any Omar. closing thoughts? Nellie? Just that I just love our partnership and I love that we did this together because we're solving to, to close gaps. Um, and I'm looking forward to all we're going to continue to do. So thank you everybody for being here. And uh, it's a journey. We're all in it together, by the way. Thank, thank you, you. Nellie, for being such a great leader.